On a recent trip to Europe, Jared and I found ourselves in a place that we never planned on being. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Jordan and this is JJ Cruz. Thank you so much for clicking into the video today. Before I get into the story, I do just want to invite you to subscribe to the channel. We have had an influx of subscribers this week. Jared and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to the, to the channel. We sometimes on this channel tell stories and talk about things that happen to us while we are traveling. And that's because we travel 60 to 70% of the year. And as we're traveling, things just happen. When you're not at home, you find yourself sometimes in funny or strange situations. And we share these stories to help teach valuable lessons to people that are traveling all over the world. So you don't happen to find yourself in the situation that we found ourselves in just a few weeks ago. Several weeks ago, we went over to Europe and we took a 10 night cruise all around Greece. It was actually a really cool cruise for Jared and I because it stopped in places that we had never been to before. Now, after 75 cruises under our belt, it takes a lot for us to get on a ship and go to all brand new destinations. But for us, this was one of those cruises and we were so excited to get on board. Something that we love when it comes to cruising in Europe is sometimes you have overnights where the ship will pull up in the morning and it'll be docked there for two full days. And there's no curfew, there's no time that you have to get back on the ship and you can kind of just go out, enjoy wherever you are, enjoy the nightlife and the food and the local culture and then get back to the ship whenever you're feeling like it. Because these types of overnights don't happen often, Jared and I love to take advantage of them. And there are two things when these ships stop and dock that we absolutely love partaking in. One is the local food. We love to eat, and if you've checked out our Instagram, we post a lot of food pictures over there on our stories. And the second thing that Jared and I love that maybe we don't talk about as much is music. We're both musical people. Jared and I both sing. I play the piano. And we have such an appreciation for music, especially music in other cultures and countries that might be a little bit different from where we come from. We will seek out music venues when we go to these different cities over in Europe. And Jared and I will actually just sit all night long looking up whatever song the DJ is playing, putting the uh, Songza app on, uh, and then sending each other songs back and forth to build playlists from where we came. So after being in all of these places in Greece, we now have this mega Greece playlist of all these songs that we had never heard before that are kind of now on repeat and living a little rent-free in our head. On this particular night, we found ourselves in Thessaloniki, Greece, again for a couple of days. So we were there overnight. Jared and I both work during the day. We're travel agents, so we'll stay on the ship a lot of times in the day. And like we said, we love overnights for that reason because we can end our work whenever we want and then kind of go off and explore. So we went out for a later dinner and then we went to a few different places that had some DJs playing, checked out the local nightlife scene. We heard from the crew on board that Thessaloniki was an awesome place to listen to live music and kind of check out the nightclubs in that area. So that's exactly what we did. We had an amazing meal. We went to a few different places and then around midnight, we started to get a little hungry again. So we wanted a little snack. So we stopped at this little Euro shack that was pretty close to the ship on our way back. We're eating, the owner kind of strikes up a conversation with us and is talking to us, asking us where we're from, what we're doing here. We explained that we were on the ship. And I want to give a little disclaimer here. When Jared and I are traveling, especially in other countries, people don't always perceive us as a couple. And that's okay. We don't actively avoid people thinking that we're, you know, a married couple or a same-sex couple. But sometimes we're not overly affectionate in public, especially when we're in a country where we just don't know what the people there and the locals will think of us. More often than not, especially when we are in Europe, people perceive us to either be A, brothers, or B, buddies or friends that are out kind of looking for a good time. This owner of this little snack shop or Euro shop, I think he thought that we were friends. And you'll find out at the end of the story why I think he thought that, but he said, oh, before you go back to the ship, you have to check out this one other spot. It's on your way back to the ship. 
you know, it's a good time there, good music, good people. Definitely stop there before you get back on the ship. And Jared and I were like, wow, thank you so much for the recommendations. We love getting local recommendations um, given to us by people that live there and know the area. So we're like, yeah, we'll stop at one more place before we get back on the ship. The place was only a few blocks from the port and it was only a couple of blocks from where we were having that late night snack. So we stop there, we find it, and we see on the outside that there's no windows and that it's kind of all like really dark looking. Normally, this would be red flag number one. However, I will say many establishments, specifically gay bars in Europe, look like this. Why is that? That is because these types of establishments, bars, nightclubs have been there well before there's been legislation passed to make these places legal. So a lot of times these types of bars or, or restaurants even will be in, put in place by LGBTQ owners as speakeasies or kind of underground bars. You find that especially in places like Italy. So that didn't really make us think twice. We open up the door, we walk in, and we immediately think, this is very different. There's loud music playing. There's groups of women kind of in the different corners of the room, kind of all talking, and they all have drinks in their hand. And there is a woman who looks like she runs and owns this place, walking all around. She's in like this long nightgown. It's like a teal nightgown. She's got her hair all up and kind of, it's kind of messy in like a huge messy bun. She's got a clipboard and a, and a pen and she's kind of walking around. Looks like she's taking people's orders. There's also patrons in there that are, are men and women, lots of different types of people in this establishment. We find ourselves a table for two. We sit down, this woman comes over and she says, hi, I'm here to take your order. And I do just want to make sure you know, a lot of people spoke very broken English in Thessaloniki. English was not widely spoken. A lot of people speak Greek. That makes sense. We are visitors in their country, so we do not expect everyone to speak English. She hands us each a menu and she says, let me know what you want to drink. The menu at this place was completely in Greek, so we weren't exactly sure what to order. It was the end of the night. So we just got a couple of Cokes. She says, good, okay, walks away, brings us our Cokes right away. And at this point, we're just kind of sitting there people watching. We're noticing that there's a lot of interaction going on between the women in the room and the men in the room. A couple of minutes go by, we had full glasses of, of Coke and a woman asks us if we need anything else. And we say, no, we're good. We've got our drinks, thank you. And then she goes on. Two more minutes go by, a different woman comes up and looks at me and says, do you need anything? And I say, no, looks at Jared, says, do you need anything? And he said, no, I'm okay, and moves on. This is the point where Jared looks at me and he says, I'm not exactly sure we are just in a bar. And at this point, I'm like, why, why would you even say that? Uh, this is very normal looking. Everybody here is super nice, very friendly. They obviously have a lot of women that work as like servers or wait staff in this establishment. I'm just being really, really naive in this moment. Finally, a third woman comes up to us and she asks us each if we need anything. We said, we're good, we've got our drinks. And she said, well, do you need anything else besides a drink? She kind of said that in very broken English, but that was kind of what we thought that we were saying. And I looked at her and I just said, no, I think very soon I just need to go to bed. And she said, okay, to bed we go. And at that point, Jared looked at me and he said, we need to leave. And I said, yes, we do. So I said, nope, I'm good. Thank you very much. Jared and I pay for our drinks. We stand up and we walk out of the establishment that we were in. It was at that point on the way home that we kind of debriefed and we realized we were probably in a brothel. What we know now that we didn't know then is that brothels are highly regulated and legal in Greece. We had no idea. Those are not legal back home where we are. But after doing a little bit of research, we realized that things like brothels and sometimes prostitution are like long standing in the history of the Greeks and the country. We make it back to the ship. We gotta look at ourselves like what just happened to us? But as we piece everything together throughout the night, we realize it all makes sense. That guy that owned the Euro place thought that we were buddies looking for a good time before we ended our night. When we walked in and saw that woman with the clipboard lo looked like a madam, 
she probably was a madam and she probably owned that place. And the women that were all there kind of working, they weren't waitstaff, they weren't servers, they were probably working a little something else. So as we pieced it together, we realized that we had completely unintentionally visited a brothel and ultimately it was a really good lesson in remembering to look up reviews and look up places online before you ever go in them. This is especially true when you're visiting a port late at night and you don't know very much about the establishments that you're visiting. We probably should have stuck to the main strip where all of the different music venues and nightclubs were but we did wander off a couple of blocks to our Euro place and then wandered off a couple more blocks into this brothel. Let me know what you think of the situation in the comments below. Have you ever been traveling and found yourself in just a, a strange place or a place that you did not expect? That is definitely what happened to us. And even as world travelers, it's good to remember to always be on your guard, to be mindful of where you are and to be looking up these places that you're going, please. Please, please, please look these things up online before you go out and visit them. It was a valuable lesson that Jared and I learned on this trip to Greece. Well, thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Jordan. This is JJ Cruz. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment. And until next time, see ya.